stampers, my name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And today I'd like to show you how I made this card. Now this card is interesting in that uh, it has this butterfly in front, but on the inside it is a bit of a pop-up. So um, I want to show you how I did this. Now I was inspired by a card made by a woman who's a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and her name, her name is Gosia, Gosia McKinnon, M-A-C-K-I-N-N-O-N. -N -N. And if you Google, I mean, if you, on YouTube, you put um, pop-up butterfly card Stampin' Up! her um, butterfly card comes up. And hers is made a little differently the the concept is the same on the inside how she did it and how she stamped it and and the design of it is a little bit different so this is my take on her card which i thought was very very pretty and i have a person in the classes that i give that has been asking for a pop-up card so i've got a couple of them planned but this was the first one and i thought that was very attractive. Still gives you lots of room to write your sentiment down here. It's a nice surprise on the inside. So let me tell you what we need to make this card. Um, I used a piece of Whisper White as the base, eight and a half by five and a half, scored at four and a quarter. Then you need a piece of white that is three and three quarters by five. Um, and when I use white for card bases and panels, typically, I'm using the heavy white cardstock or the thick cardstock. And so for this, we need a piece of white cardstock that is 10 by 2.5, that is the lighter weight cardstock. Then I need a piece of dapper denim that is 5 and a quarter by 4. Then I need a piece of dapper denim that is 3 by 2.5. Then I need a piece of scrap white for my sentiment um, and my DSP. I need a piece that is two and three quarters by two and a quarter, and that is to nest on this piece. And it might actually be this one. It is. <laughs> so two and a quarter by two and three quarters. Then we need two pieces that are one inch by five and a quarter. And I think that is all the pieces. And I'm going to switch this up just a little bit. I cut this panel a little bit smaller. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger on this one. And I was messing around trying to get all of the colors in here. So this medallion is made in Tranquil Tide and I think I'm going to go back to Dapper Denim. So that's what we're going to do. So let me tell you what we need to do to make this card. Firstly, I'm going to fold and burnish my card here and get that ready to go and then set aside. Then um, uh, let's see. This dapper denim can go right on the front. So let's go ahead and adhere that and get that done and out of the way. So this piece can go right here centered on the front. And these two pieces can go on the inside and I would say the only thing to watch on your designer series paper mine felt like it had a directional pattern this the little uh, tick marks seem to be going this way so I made sure I cut my side pieces here and my front panel piece all going the same way so I'm going to go ahead and adhere these pieces to the inside of my card. And this designer series paper comes from the naturally eclectic uh, paper. And so I'm just going to set this down with a bit of a margin all the way around on both ends. 
and we'll have that part of the card all done. Okay, so um, these two pieces can be adhered together. It's another thing we can do to have that done, and then we can get on to the things that are uh, a little bit more challenging to do. So that piece is there. All right, so this piece needs to be run through the fluttering embossing folder here. So this just went in here and has run through the big shot to emboss the white piece. And to save a little bit of time, I've already done mine. Um, and actually that piece can now go onto the card as well. We're narrowing it down to the things that we really are going to take a little bit more time. And so this piece is going to go on here. And this is one of the things I changed as I really um, rethought this card. that's centered on there. Um, this one showed more of that dapper denim full, a border and we'll see which one we like better but um, I think I wanted more of the embossing to show. So then we're going to go on to some of the pieces here that we need to um, go ahead and make. Now uh, on this piece, this 10 and a half or 10 by two and a half piece is um, one we are going to score, and I'm just using my trimmer because it's handy, scoring that at two inches and then at three and a half inches and then at five inches. Let me extend my arm here and move this down. Then this needs to be scored at six and a half inches and then scored at eight inches. So there we go. We've got a two inch piece on either side and then one and a half all the way through the center. And what we're going to do is just, since this is the thinner card, this can be burnished um, easily with your fingers. Uh, no need to do a whole bunch. Okay, and so what we're going to do with this is we are going to set this so that I'm going to take the second fold and fold it across. Then I'm going to take the second fold again here and fold it back. So I've created a little Z. You can see there what I've done. Again, take the second, the second score mark, fold it over, and then from this end, the second score mark, and fold it over. And that you just line up your edges there and pierce that down. And what we're going to do then is run this. This is from the Bold Butterflies Framelits. And we're going to set this on here and center the body on one of the score lines here. And when I do that, you'll notice that there's a slight overhang on this end. And that's so the butterflies can stay connected when they cut. So, and, and then it flares out on either side, so we get a full butterfly on either side. So, and if you're more comfortable, you can add a little piece of washi tape across this to hold it in place. Now, I've already run mine through the Big Shot, and there's my pieces. Now, you'll notice that this piece is embossed, because once I ran it through the Big Shot and got my piece out, I left it in place and I put it into the embossing folder and 
I embossed the butterflies. And that's how I got to this point. So, once you're here, what you can do is take your butterflies and you see that they pull apart. And what we have is two of the sides are embossed and the one in the center is debossed. That's because we had them folding back and forth. And I chose to go ahead and use the two ends on the side that are embossed and leave the debossed side in the middle. Now, um, what I did then next was to take a couple of daubers and take my Dapper Denim ink first and I just slightly went around the butterflies and oops got runaway butterflies here and go ahead and just ink the edges of the butterflies here. The next thing I'm going to do is take my ink here that is the uh, Lemon Lime Twist and I'm going to take my dauber here and I'm just going to slightly go over these butterflies on the outside ones. And just ink up some of those raised areas there. And on this middle one, what I end up inking up is the raised areas which outlines the butterflies. And actually, I thought I, I kind of liked that, the way it came out. So there we have uh, all uh, inked up as much as I'm going to ink up anyway on the butterflies. And um, then each butterfly needs to be folded in on itself. So like this and like this. And then... What we're going to do, and then we can set it aside to dry, is to put a little bit of wet glue on the top part of the butterfly wings here and on both sides. In fact, that's kind of a, a lot of glue here. Let me see if I've got a little piece of something. Yeah, I do. There's a little piece of scrap. I can use one of these post-it notes here and just take a little bit of that glue off and spread it around a little bit more. Okay, and what I'm going to do is set this so that my butterfly is perpendicular here, sort of a line along here, with the wing, I'd say it's about hmm, maybe a third of an inch in on the top and the side. And then I'm going to close this card on itself here. And we are going to, in fact, what I'm gonna do is just put this right up here in the corner and I'm going to put a, uh, a block on it to just hold it down and let that glue stick. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is start working on this piece, which is our piece of scrap. And I'm going to do a couple things here. I'm working with the stamp set called Watercolor Wings. And I'm only using the outline of the butterfly and this interior detail along with the body. And that's what I'm using here. And then in the sentiment here, I'm just putting just for you in the sentiment. So um, one of the things that I've done is we want to cut, and I have done that ahead of time here, my dapper denim um, stitched framelit for the outside of my sentiment 
and then I run a piece of white for the inside of my sentiment. And I can just go ahead and get that stamped. Because this part is all about stamping. So um, you might want to wait and do your stamping first and then cut out. I was being brave here. So hopefully this will be straight on here. <laughs> It fits nicely inside this and then I'm going to add a little bit of snail and this piece is going to be all ready to go. You can see this is really a pretty fast card once your, all your pieces are cut out. Okay, for this next part I'll need both the Dapper Denim Ink and the Lemon Lime Twist again. And I have my uh, stamps mounted here. And I am first going to use my stamp that has the outline of the butterfly. And I'm doing that on here on this piece of scrap. And I'm doing it in dapper denim. And the nice thing about photopolymers is you can really see if you're inked up as much as you think you are by just looking at them. So I think that looks pretty good. One last time just to make sure. And I'm going to set down my butterfly here. And get my image around the end here done. Very nice. Then I am going to um, change this out to the butterfly interior detail. And here is this piece. Just pick that up on my block, and I'm going to do that part in Lemon Lime Twist. And I am going to center this, and what I'm trying to do is take these pieces that are along here and line them up so that they line up with the top of that one. Now, this gives you a white rim, and I went ahead and filled that in with my marker, and I'll show you exactly what I did for that. But I'm going to try and get this set in here. There we go. Okay, there I'm stamped. Now, uh, let me get the ink out of here now. And I used a chalk marker. This is something that Gosia did in her video. And she added some white spots along the wings which I thought made them look a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to add those here, and then I'm going to have to add a few more in a minute, because I didn't like the way this looked with the white rim around it. So I have my dapper denim marker, and I am just going to go right around the edge of this butterfly and fill in that color so that when I use my framelit it will cut out without any kind of a white edge. So I'm just carefully going around the perimeter here of my butterfly.
you notice I'm not being terribly precise, but that framelit should cut um, some of this away, so there's no need to be terribly neat um, uh, if you, except on the interior. And here we go. I'm going to do a fairly wide margin here and then narrow this down because then we'll intersect the butterfly body. So I'm going to come up around here, making that all fairly wide. And the same thing here, narrowing that down as I come up because we'll be intersecting with the butterfly body in there. Okay, so now after that's had just a second to dry, I want to continue that dot pattern onto this new piece of dapper denim around the edges of the butterfly. There we go. Now I'm going to go use my butterfly framelit again on this piece and I'll be okay. right back. Now I've cut out my butterfly here using my framelit. And there you see I've got complete coverage with no white edges, which is exactly what I wanted. And in fact, just to make absolutely sure, I'm going to go around the edge of this with my marker and do away with any white edges that might be there. Okay, now, um, let's see, I have the other stamp here, which is the butterfly body, which might leave a little white edge, we'll just have to see. So I'm going to bring back my dapper denim ink here, and let's stamp that body in and see what we get. Okay, it looks like I'll have to use my marker to go around the edges and fill that part in. And again, if I use my marker I can take out any white edges that remain. And I added a little uh, rhinestone detail to this, so that won't show much, but I wanted to have it be, uh, have complete coverage and not have any white showing. Okay, so um, what I did to mount this as you can see here, is I mounted my butterfly to this piece and I put my, well, let's see, we can use the bone folder, use my bone folder along one edge of the body here and fold those wings up and then do the same thing on the other side of the body and fold fold the wings up. And what that does is gives you a nice big flat surface on the back here for glue. And in my case, I'm going to use some of the mini dimensionals that we have because they're perfect for this when you have little tight spaces. So I'm going to take a couple of these dimensionals 
actually I think I'm going to go ahead and put three of them on. There's so many of them on a little sheet. These little sheets last forever. There, so he's raised. And then I set this um, whole panel up on dimensionals as well. Okay, there we go. That's all set now. Now I have this piece, which I'm also going to raise on dimensionals. I didn't use any doppering around this piece, and I think I want to see if I can go back and add that because I really did like the way that looked. So maybe what I can do is just very lightly go over this piece and just add a little bit of that lemon line twist to this piece. When you do yours, you can do it before you adhere this to the to the page. Yeah, I like that better. Okay, so there we have it. Now I have a few rhinestones to add um, to my project. There we go. So I've added some embellishment and the last thing, and I didn't do it, um, you could put butterfly bodies in here. And on this one, I think I did. I'm going to try and add those. Go. Got those put in there by hook or crook, and there we have our project for the day. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching my YouTube channel today. I do appreciate it, and um. You can purchase any of the materials that you see here today on my website, www.lbedinger.stampinup.net. Uh, Stampin' Up! has a special going right now. If you have ever thought about joining Paper Pumpkin, uh, right now, I think it's from August 11th through September the 10th, if you join Paper Pumpkin, as a first-time subscriber, you get your September kit at 50% off. So you might want to take a look and see if that's something you might be interested in doing. Um, thank you again for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed our little project here, and I hope you'll give it a try. Uh, and I'll be back soon with more cards and projects. Bye!